After years of hearing that Argo is a great film and knowing that it won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 2013, I finally watched it. I have to say that I thought it was a good film, but I don't believe it deserved all the praise it received, and the Oscars that it won were in the wrong categories. I'll give it a review and then go into the film's legacy and how it performed at the Oscars. Review Argo is an adaptation of the book The Master of Disguise and a Wired article from 2007, The Great Escape, How the CIA Used a Fake Sci-Fi Flick to Rescue Americans from Tehran. It tells of a CIA operative who created a fake sci-fi film named Argo to go undercover as a producer scouting locations in Iran to rescue American citizens. Ben Affleck directed the film as well as starring as the CIA operative Tony Mendez. He does a fantastic job both as a director and an actor. The place where the film deserves its most praise to me is in the direction and the acting, especially amongst the supporting cast. John Goodman plays Hollywood makeup artist John Chambers and is a lot of fun to watch with all his little mannerisms and fun attitude. Chambers gets Mendez in touch with Lester Siegel, played by Alan Arkin, a producer who had the script for Argo. Together, the three of them put together and promote this fake sci-fi film. So for good points, we have the acting, directing, and I also like the cinematography, except for one scene where a handheld was used unnecessarily. On to the bad. I really dislike the editing. The film cuts way too frantically, even when a scene isn't meant to be tense. It's also sometimes cuts to a reaction shot that feels like it's the wrong character to be cutting to. The script I also have some grievances with. The film doesn't do much to explain the historical context as for why the Iranians were angered by the Americans. It also downplays the importance of Canada's involvement, making it out as the Americans doing all the work and the Canadians being little more than housekeepers. It even goes so far as to make the UK and New Zealand look bad, when in reality they were also helping the Americans. Overall, I give the film a 7.5 out of 10, so it's really not that bad, just not the great film it was made out to be. Legacy when it came out, the film was praised for its attention to details. Over the years, however, many historians have pointed out flaws in its accuracy, most notably the depiction of Canadians. Ken Taylor was the Canadian ambassador to Iran at the time, and despite potentially ruining Canadian relations with Iran, he took in the Americans and kept them safe, because it was the right thing to do. The film depicts him as just a mere caretaker, and not the hero he was. The original release even seemed to depict him as a glory stealer, but upon backlash, Ben Affleck went back and revised that part to say he was recognized for his part. The film also says the English and New Zealand embassies refused to help the Americans, when in reality, they were all working together and were prepared to take them in if they could no longer stay with the Canadians. The other part of the legacy I want to give attention to is screenwriter Chris Terrio. I won't mince words, he's one of my least favorite writers currently working in Hollywood. Because of his success with this film, he keeps getting jobs writing for big projects, despite each of those being seen as colossal critical failures. He has since worked on Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Justice League, and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. These are all big budget films that were aboard for their writing and he keeps getting jobs anyways, because he's the guy that wrote Argo. Academy Awards At the Academy Awards, Argo won three Oscars and was nominated for another four. I believe it deserved each of the four nominations it lost for, and arguably Ben Affleck should have been nominated for Best Director, too. Starting with film editing, I've already said that I think it cuts too frantically and too often. It does seem that often the Academy Award for editing goes to the film with the most editing, and not ones that use it a little more subtly. Other films that were nominated that I think would have been more deserving are Lincoln, because it's never wrong to hold a camera on Daniel Day-Lewis's acting, and Life of Pi for not trying to cut around the special effects and instead basking in them.
For the Best Adapted Screenplay Oscar, I've already spoken a great deal about what I think of the writing and how poorly it adapts the source material. I think Best Adapted Screenplay should have gone to Silver Linings Playbook, though again a case could be made for Lincoln being more historically accurate and for Life of Pi bringing its story to life. And finally, Best Picture. The Academy loves to praise itself and Hollywood in general, so I understand why a movie that depicts Hollywood as playing a part in rescuing Americans would garner a lot of love. Even though they were kind of just seen as tools the CIA could exploit. However, I think a lot of these other films were more deserving of Best Picture, such as Silver Linings Playbook, Lincoln, and Life of Pi, but also Les Miserables and Django Unchained, I would put far ahead of Argo. This isn't fully meant to be an indictment of Argo as a film, because just alone as a film, I do like it, but this is more a commentary on the Academy Awards and how wrong they can sometimes get. If you're looking for a film to watch, Argo isn't a bad one. It's very entertaining, especially watching the acting performances. The film mostly just falters when you look more into its legacy. I hope you enjoyed listening to me revisit the Oscars again. That's what I started my channel with, and I wanted to get back to that. Thanks for watching.